government has meaning. Now, sometimes I question that purpose and meaning, right? But nonetheless, it has purpose and meaning. Uh, We can see uh, everything in life has purpose and meaning. Why? Because we as mankind strive for that. We long for it. We want to have purpose and meaning in our lives. I don't know very many people, and there are a few people that enjoy this, and I don't get it, okay? There, there are very few people in life that enjoy chaos. I think most of us desire some stability and purpose and meaning in our lives. Amen? We desire that. Now, that doesn't mean it always happens. Sometimes life feels like it's chaos all around us, right? But while it feels like chaos, we long for purpose. We long for a plan. We long for meaning. We long to strive for excellence. We long to do what is right. We long to, what's the word I'm looking for here? We we long to do better tomorrow than we have done today. Success. There's the word that was right on the tip of my tongue. We long for success, do we not? We want to be a successful people. We want to be a successful family. We want to be a successful church. But I've got news for you. Jeremiah in the eyes of mankind was not successful. And yet in the eyes of God, he continued to do what needed to be done. Remember earlier I told you we were going to come back to verse 11? Let's come back to it. You ready? Verse number 11, right in the middle of our points here. We've got one and two we've discussed. Here in a moment we're going to talk about three and four. But right in the middle, let's go back to verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. That word thoughts, if we look that up in the original language, That word thoughts, guess what it means? It means a plan, a purpose, an intention. For I know the plan that I have for you. I know the purpose that I have for you. I I know the intention that I have for you. Jeremiah, in a couple of different places through the book of Jeremiah and the book of Lamentation, Jeremiah said, God, I'm all alone. Why am I still doing this? Why am I spinning my wheels? What am I doing? God, are you sure I'm doing what you want me to do? And right here in the middle of the book of Jeremiah, God says, Jeremiah, just shut up. I know what I'm doing. He says, Jeremiah, I, I've got plans for you. I've got purpose for you. I've got, a, I've got ideas for you. I have thoughts for you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. And I give you, look at the last part of this. And I think the last part of this verse, a lot of people skip over and forget. You know, the trendy thing on Facebook and Twitter, t-shirts have been made, hats have been made. The trendy thing is the first part of that. For I know the plans I have for you. And that's great. That's fine. Look at the last part. To give you an expected end. God knows what is coming. God knows what is next. God knows what tomorrow will bring. Have you ever wondered what tomorrow will bring? God knows. God doesn't wonder about it. He knows whether it's for the better or for the worse. God knows what's coming tomorrow for you. And here's what God's telling Jeremiah in this passage in chapter number 29. We read today verses 8 through 13. You can expand that. You can go back and start at verse number 1. You can go through the end of the chapter if you'd like. But here's what God is telling Jeremiah. God's saying, Jeremiah, listen, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. You just keep following my plan. Keep doing what I've called you to do. And there will be an end greater than you can ever imagine. Let's look at the final two points now today. Points three and four. When it comes to finding purpose in your life, when it comes to finding God's plan in your life, I want to challenge you today to find something greater 
than you. No, and I put it in parentheses. Let's go back. Find someone greater than you. You know who that someone is? It's Jesus Christ. You say, well, maybe this person's greater than me. Maybe that person's greater than me. I can look up to this person as a role model and that person as a role model. And you know, there are some people in our lives. I, I, I loved my grandparents. I looked up to my grandparents. Still have one grandmother living. I love her very much. I look up to my mom and dad. I look up to some previous pastors of mine. I've looked up to some old... I still remember my Sunday school teachers from when I was a kid. I can still remember some of the lessons that they gave me. You know, I looked up to them, and I, I'm thankful for the example that they laid before me. But can I share this with you? Every single one of them are just a man or woman that has and continues to fail. And while I might look to them for advice that's possible they could fail me. But you know who will never fail? Jesus. He will never fail you. He will never forget you. He will never leave you off to the side. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants to give you purpose in your life. And if you're looking for purpose in your life, find someone that is greater than you. And that someone is not another person. That someone is Jesus. If you want to find purpose, look for Christ. Look to the cross. Look to who He is and what He has done and what He is doing. Find purpose in Jesus. Some of us might try to find purpose in our work. Some of us might try to find purpose in our, in our day-to-day lives. But you will never find a purpose that will complete you, that will satisfy you, that will make you feel good other than the purpose of Jesus Christ. Number four, if you're looking for purpose, if you're looking for a plan in your life, Rally around the mission of Jesus. Now, I'm going to focus on this for a few minutes. Maybe there's someone today that says, what in the world is the mission of Jesus? What's the mission of Christ? The mission of Christ always has been ever since he came and will continue until the day he returns for the spreading of the gospel message. The telling of the gospel to each and every person. This is a new year. It's a new, we have a new clean slate. Say, boy, Pastor 2020 was rough on us. We faced the virus. Church was canceled for 10 or 11 weeks out of the year. It was just a really difficult year for us. It was a difficult year for me. Pastor, I I didn't get to share the gospel message as much as I wanted to. I didn't get to tell as many people about Jesus. I've got good news for you. It's a new year. It's a new time. Don't dwell on the things that are behind you. Look forward to the things that are before. Look forward unto the cross. Realize I can't change yesterday, but I can make a difference for tomorrow. I can have a plan and a purpose to take the mission of Jesus telling people about the death, burial, and resurrection, telling people. That Christ came to save us. Not only did He come to save us, but He came and He established His local church upon this earth. And that church still survives today. And that should excite us. That should excite us to know that what we're doing, what we're preaching, it's the same message, or at least it should be, the same message that the disciples preached on the shores of Galilee 2,000 years ago. The Word of God has not changed. Therefore, our message, our mission should not change. Now, times change. Cultures change. The way we reach people is different in 2021 than it was in 1950. It just is. The best example I've ever given of that, I've ever heard of that, uh, man preaching a message one time, Brother Jasper was his name. Brother Jasper preached the message and he said, you know, he said, it's like fishing. He said, it's the best analogy I can give because it's the analogy Jesus gave. Amen? 
what Jesus called us fishers of men, right? He said the best analogy I can give is the analogy Jesus gave, and it's fishing. He said, you know, when you go fishing, he said, I, if I'm going fishing for trout, I'm going to use a certain type of, of bait. If I'm going fishing for bass, I'll use a different kind of bait. Catfish, different bait. I go out onto the ocean, I'm deep sea fishing, different bait. He said, but you know what always remains the same? That hook. And what letter is that hook shaped like? A J, which is representation of Jesus. See, every pond we go to might require a little bit different bait. But the hook never changes. Jesus remains the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Never change the mission of Jesus. Never change the message of Jesus. We might have to change the method a little bit. We might have to tweak how we're reaching today's kids a little bit. But we never, ever, ever change the message. That message has always been and will always remain the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is where we find our purpose. That is the plan that God has set before us. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. God has a plan for you. He knows the plan that he has for you. The plan is ready for you. And that plan is to follow the mission of Jesus Christ. Will you do that today? If you are living and breathing, if you are alive, if God has kept you alive in this new year of 2021, God has a purpose and a plan for you. We're going to be looking at more purpose over the next few weeks. We're going to, over the next three weeks, next three Sundays in a row, we're going to be focusing in on this idea of purpose. What purpose does God have for you in your life? Would you join me the next three weeks as we look at it? I'm excited about it. I hope you will be as well. Let's all stand. Let's sing a verse of invitation. I don't know what might be upon your heart today. Maybe there was something that was read here in Jeremiah 29. Maybe there's something that was mentioned in our four points this morning. Maybe there was something that God just impressed upon your heart, upon your soul, upon your mind. Whatever it may be, if you're here in person, we've got a couple of uh, open pews, open steps. I'll throw my mask on and kneel down and pray with you. If you're online this morning, you can pray in your home, wherever you may be. Go to the Lord. Start this new year out right. Start it out with a plan to serve God, with a purpose to serve God, with a mission to tell the world about Jesus. Can you do that in the new year? I pray that you can. Let's sing together. Why not tonight? While we pray and while we plead, while you see your soul's deep need, Jesus now.